Money was my whole life, my biggest problem, the only thing I ever wanted, yet the only thing that I could not get. Even in the first grade, I knew I wanted money more than anything. I itched for it. I wanted it. I had to get it. And I would do anything for it. And I mean literally anything. And this is where my story begins. One week after I started my business, I literally had trouble hiding all the money I had. I looked adorable posing outside the Disney castle in the cutest dress. I uploaded the photo, and within five minutes, the likes and comments came flooding in. Ah, yes. This was going to be one of my most popular pictures ever. I was about to become an influencer, and it was all thanks to Chorritos, the Photoshop king, whom I never met in real life. I was about to put up another photo when my mom called my name. Oh no, I pretended to be asleep. She couldn't know about this. No way. Well, to be honest, I didn't actually go to the Disney castle. In fact, I'd never traveled anywhere. My Instagram account was one gigantic lie, and Chorritos was my key to success. I'd send him photos and he'd photoshop them to look amazing. The best part? No one knew I was a fake. No one. Not even my parents. There was one other secret. Even Chorritos didn't know that the photos I was sending him weren't even mine. Yup, I'd found a French model on the internet and was using her pictures. I just wanted to make some quick money. Ha, <laughs> I had all this figured out. But fame wasn't enough for me. I wanted money, so I came up with another brilliant idea. What if we started a business to Photoshop people's profiles to make them more popular? I mean, who doesn't want more likes on their social content, right? We made a new account and got down to business. Pretty soon, messages were pouring in. Turned out everyone wanted to be an Instagram model. I felt rich already. It wasn't only about looking beautiful. People asked for different things also. One girl asked if we could cut her stepmom out of her picture. Then she paid us $100. It was so easy. Another girl asked us to make her crush smile to her. Another asked to remove their body hair, to add expensive cars, to add a dragon, to replace their cheating boyfriend with a dog, to make her sister uglier than her, to make their teacher pee in her pants, and so many other crazy things. But the real moneymaker was making the nose smaller and lips bigger. The thing is, my parents were really poor. Whatever they earned, they'd spend on my education. There was never enough money for pretty dresses or travel vacations. This one time, I asked my mom to buy me a lip gloss, and her face turned purple. She she was always overreacting. All I wanted was to be rich by any means. They had no idea what I was up to. If they knew I was spending 99% of my time on Insta, they would probably disown me. After a couple of weeks, I'd already earned enough to buy myself a whole new wardrobe. I had to hide it under my bed in a special box because if my parents found out, they'd think I was selling myself. One day, I was in the school bathroom changing into my new Gucci dress when I overheard a couple of girls talking about our Photoshop account. I almost laughed my bum off. If only they knew it was me. <laughs> I texted Chorritos to tell him we were the talk of the town and then came out of the toilet stall. One of the girls was still there. Her name was Belinda, and she was a goddess. She was everything I wanted to be. I smiled at her, but she took one look at me and said, Oh, Valerie, you should definitely contact the Photoshop people. They might even be able to make you look half decent for a change. I was so humiliated. How could she be so rude to me? I ran out of the bathroom stall almost in tears. But then I thought, why should I care about stupid Belinda when money was rolling in, right? Then one day, a jewelry brand emailed my fake travel account, offering me $1,000 for a sponsored post. There was one tiny problem, though. I actually had to go to the jewelers to collect the necklace for the post. If they saw me, my gig would be up in smoke. But the money was so good, I just couldn't resist. At this rate, I could even afford plastic surgery. And then I might even end up prettier than Belinda. So I did what all the models do when they want to lay low. I wore the biggest sunglasses I could find, I put on super fancy clothes and wrapped a silk scarf around my head. No one could tell it was me. The store treated me so well and all I had to do was to act slightly rude when they told me to take off my scarf. I could do this forever. Life was perfect. But that's when the weirdest thing happened. After having worked with Chorritos, I started developing feelings for him. He was just so nice to me. He said I was the prettiest girl he'd ever seen and I totally deserved to go to all these places I wanted to go to. He made my heart flutter. One day, he asked if we could meet. I was so bummed. I so badly wanted to say yes, but I didn't want to lose him. I knew I should tell him I'd been lying about my image, but I wasn't ready. Days later, Belinda texted us. I almost screamed with joy. She asked if we could make it look like she was traveling on weekends. I told Chorito she'd bullied me and asked him to do a bad job, but he refused. He said we had to be professional. Otherwise, she might not pay us. 
And I guess he had a point. I did want the money. Plus, I felt so satisfied that she was faking her life, too. She kept coming back to us, which I found hilarious at first. But after a few weeks, her account was almost as popular as my fake French model account. I couldn't believe it. Sure, we were rolling in cash now, but I didn't want her to overtake me. It felt like she was my competition, and I told Chiritos I didn't want to work with her anymore. He didn't reply that day. I guess I should have known something was fishy because that's when things started going downhill. What happened the next morning made my heart sink. He had sent me a message saying he didn't want to do this anymore, as it was interfering with his studies, and that we'd already made enough money. I was really surprised. And mad. How could he just want out when we were doing so well? And I thought we were friends now. I asked him if we could meet up, and then he just didn't respond. I couldn't believe it. I was furious. What a traitor. I didn't need him. I could do this on my own. I removed him from the Instagram account and then posted an ad. I would be a one-woman show from now on. That's when I realized what a huge mistake I'd made. I had been so bummed about Chiritos that I'd posted the ad on the French model account. By the time I saw what I had done, everyone had seen it and they knew my pictures were photoshopped. I was devastated. My account lost followers immediately and people were making fun of me. Even everyone at school kept talking about it. After school, I was miserable, so I went to the park to calm myself down. I was sitting under my favorite tree when I noticed Belinda walking into the park. I quickly hid behind the trunk so she wouldn't see me and then noticed her walking towards a boy. Ugh. I rolled my eyes. They kissed and then sat down on a bench. Pretty soon they were laughing like hyenas. I wanted to know what they were laughing about, so I got closer. To my horror, they were talking about me. Well, the other me. But me. Belinda was telling him about the influencer who had been her competition. She was so happy to have that girl out of her way. The guy said he was happy for her and kept laughing at how stupid she, I, was. I wanted to punch him. And then he said something that left me shook. He said, I actually know the girl who has that account. I was running the Photoshop account with her. Oh my god. I almost passed out. Chiritos was Belinda's boyfriend? What the? He gave Belinda a kiss and said, not like you, babe. I mean, sure, your photos aren't real, but at least it's your face. And Belinda looked at him with the biggest puppy eyes and said she was so grateful that my Photoshop account had brought them together. I wanted to puke. It was time to get out, but I should have known the universe was set against me because just as I was about to leave, Chirito said something that ruined my life. He had hacked the French model account when I refused to see him and had found out that I was using someone else's face. He added that he had traced me back to Belinda's school. I gasped. Please don't say it. Please don't say it. Belinda was all ears. No way, she said. Tell me who. Then in the worst two seconds of my life, I heard Chirito say my name. For a second... Belinda was silent. The whole world was silent for a minute. And then she <laughs> roared with laughter. I wanted to die. How could Chiritos do this to me? Belinda obviously spared no time in telling everyone that I was behind the fake French model profile. I instantly became the school's laughing stock, but at least my parents didn't know anything about it. Things were really terrible at school. One time, my math teacher commented I should waste less time on Instagram and focus on studies. Everyone laughed. The only person who didn't was geeky little Freddy. He just looked at me and his eyes showed empathy from behind his thick glasses. However, I couldn't bear the laughs, and I was humiliated, and furious, and heartbroken. Why was this happening to me? I decided I wanted to take revenge on Belinda and Chiritos. I was going to do something wicked to them. I wanted to get rich and flaunt my money in their faces, and I knew just how to do it. I made a third new account, hired a different photo editor, and got to work immediately. Thanks to my already established connections, I knew where to begin. I started getting requests like crazy, and soon I had built quite a profile once again. I was back in business, all by myself. More money for me. Then I set up a fake account of another pretty girl, keeping it as secret as possible. From there, I messaged Chiritos one day. He replied immediately, the cheater. I started flirting with him and told him he was the cutest boy I had ever seen. Like I didn't know that was a fake profile. He started flirting back with me almost immediately. When I asked him if he was dating anyone, he said no. I laughed. There you go, Belinda. You're no more special than me. I took screenshots and moved to stage two of my plan. I asked to meet Chiritos and immediately he agreed. Then I also messaged Belinda and told her Chiritos was cheating. At first, she wouldn't believe me, but I told her where I was meeting him. She said she'd be there. Ah, sweet success. I couldn't help feeling overjoyed. 
The next day, I texted Cheritos and Belinda to make sure they were both coming. I had decided to call them to the very park they betrayed me in. When they saw each other there, the looks on their faces were priceless. Cheritos tried to make up a story, but Belinda showed him the screenshots I'd sent her. There was no escaping this. Cheritos almost looked like he was about to cry, and Belinda looked like she would make him. I sat behind the tree laughing. I could hear her yelling all the way from where I was hiding. Life was good. That's what you get for humiliating me, Belinda. But the very next second, the most horrible thing happened. Two police officers approached me and asked if I was Valerie. I said yes with a shaking voice. One of the officers started reading out my Miranda rights. I was shocked. What was this all about? I had done nothing wrong. The commotion also attracted Cheritos and Belinda's attention. They stopped fighting and came over to see what was happening. It was just my luck that they saw I was getting arrested. I kept asking what I'd done wrong, but the cops said they had to escort me to the police station where they would call my parents and explain everything. I was scared to death as I got into the police car. I swear I saw Belinda and Cheritos laughing. I wanted to cry. Once we got to the police station and my parents had arrived, looking totally confused and anxious, the chief investigator told us that they had convicted a serial offender who they had been looking for for several months. It turned out he used fake internet IDs to scam people. They had reverse tracked his fake IDs to my account. They were arresting me for assisting a federal criminal and I would have to appear before a judge. I was horrified. My mom was so embarrassed that she started crying on the spot. Dad just stood there silently in shock. I wanted the ground to open up and swallow me whole. My life was over. I was going to be thrown in prison. The idea of the cold, dark walls of a prison cell made me want to puke. I started shaking and crying uncontrollably. Mom asked the police chief to let me go, but he said there was nothing he could do. When we appeared before the judge, our lawyer advised us to plead guilty to all the felonies I had committed. Since I was underage, they couldn't send me to prison, and I was so thankful. The police said that they were going to take down all of my accounts and I would have to repay the victims. I thought I had earned some really decent cash, and not only did it get taken away, but also my parents had to pay extra fees for the lawyer and court expenses. My dad didn't speak to me for an entire week, and mom locked herself in her room and cried her eyes out. At school the next week, I tried to keep my head down, but there was no escaping Belinda. Seeing me at the park, she had obviously put two and two together and understood I was behind her and Chirito's fight. So she even forgave him. But me? Everyone was whispering about me. At lunch, Belinda the demon came up to me and said, Valerie, you're pathetic. First, you make fake accounts, then you get involved with criminals. I wanted to shout back at her and tell everyone she was a fake too, but I was too scared to even try now. I snuck around in the shadows all day, hoping no one would see me. Sometimes I went to the park to cry. I was devastated. I just didn't understand why all this was happening to me. One day as I sat crying under a tree, I heard a voice and I almost jumped out of my skin. I swear if it was Belinda, I was going to punch her. But it turned out to be Geeky Freddy. He asked me if I was okay. I sniffed and rolled my eyes at him. After everything that was happening, did he expect me to be okay? Suddenly, he just started laughing. That's it. I couldn't punch Belinda, but this geek was getting his butt kicked. I was about to jump to my feet when he said, Valerie, you're better than that. You don't need to fake your life to be successful. You can study and work hard and prove to all those people that you're more than just a pretty face. I stared at him with narrowed eyes. You think I'm pretty? He went bright red and said he'd had a crush on me for years. I was shook. Then he quickly changed the topic and said he'd show me something I wouldn't believe. His Instagram account? It had more than 50,000 followers. And it was about science. He jokingly told me to stalk his account when I had time and left. That night, I couldn't get Freddy out of my head. I deleted Chirito's number from my phone. I never wanted to speak to him again. And then I was about to text Freddy on Insta when my parents suddenly burst into my room. They were shaking with anger and said they'd spoken to the school and found out I hadn't applied to college at all. They said they worked so hard for me to go to school and I was doing all these crazy things for some cash. I was so embarrassed. They did have a point. I tried to apologize, but they were crazy mad at me. I heard my mom crying herself to sleep and my dad just kept slamming doors. I knew I had to make it up to them, but how? I texted Freddy for ideas, but he said he was busy and would talk to me later. I was disappointed. I thought we were becoming friends. But when I got to school, I saw something that made my jaw drop. All over the hallway at school were photos from Belinda's Insta account, and they said fake on them in red ink. I knew Belinda would think I'd done it, but I didn't even care. I later learned from my friends that Chiritos broke up with her after her reputation went south. I didn't feel the least bit of sympathy. They well deserved each other. Turns out it had been Freddy. 
And when I saw him at lunch that day, I literally threw myself at him and hugged him. Everyone had been laughing at Belinda. She was no better than me. Freddie just laughed and said he hated to see me so hurt and that Belinda deserved it. Six months later, my life is finally on the right track. I studied really hard with Freddie after school for my SATs and did a restaurant job on the side to save up for college. And finally, I'm in. And my parents couldn't be prouder. Freddie the genius is off to med school, but I still get to see him every day because we are dating now. Guess what I'm studying? I'm doing a degree in business. I figured I really have a flair for selling and marketing things to people. After all, I did manage to run a business successfully when I was only 14.